Hello students, uh, we've reached towards the ninth lecture of mass communication and in all the previous lectures we've done with uh, the various modes of communication, the various aspects of print media, the various laws that govern print media, then we've done in detail about cinema. Now, in this module, we are dealing with all of these aspects and beyond because uh, the primary focus is to enable you about the various pedagogies of mass communication, then to familiarize you with the different concepts and components of the development of the radio, and primarily to acquaint you with the evolution of radio in the Indian scenario. So primarily, in today's class, we'll be dealing about the development of radio as a mode of mass communication, the Indian broadcasting scenario, the early years, the war years, the underground Congress radio, the All India Radio during and post-independence period, then the primal milestones achieved by the All India Radio from the 1900s to the 2000s, then the program composition of All India Radio and the All India Radio Services. Now, uh, we know that the radio is considered to be a primal mode of mass medium. So the radio is convenient, the radio is portable, and in most cases, you do not need an expensive amount of set up or electricity or other modes by which the radio could be used. Now the development of radio as a medium of mass communication primarily was conceptualized during the World War I period. So it was that point of time when radio was considered to be the first truly mass medium of communication reaching millions of people instantly and altering social attitudes, family relationships and how people related to their environment. Today, if we take the example of the radio, we do see how radio acts as a mode of mass communication by reaching to people instantly. So today, if there is a breaking news, of course, you do have the television to provide you with the news as a um, very important one as soon as it's possible, but it's not always possible to log in into your television set. So primarily the need of the radio arises with it. So radio was the first truly used mode of mass communication reaching to people almost instantly and altering social attitudes. Now if you see the programs that are being aired by the radio stations, you would understand why radio is attributed towards the formation of social attitudes, the various family relationships, and how people are treated to their environment. For example, today you have radio shows which are segregated with community needs, you have radio shows which deals with your family needs, your leisure, then you have radio shows which cater to various kinds of music that binds people of all generations together. So, primarily, you need to see why radio has developed into a primal mode of mass communication only because of the fact that it's less expensive, it's portable, and it is easily available. Now, the existence of electromagnetic radiation was demonstrated by Hertz in an experiment designed to confirm a prediction made earlier in the 19th century by James Clerk Maxwell. Now, even though Hertz is attributed for uh, performing the experiment where the electromagnetic radiation was demonstrated and he was attributed with predicting the 
predictions of James Clerk Maxwell, yet they are not credited wholly with the evolution of the radio. So while Hertz made the discovery in 1888, Jugliel Mo Marconi was the man who foresaw and developed the radio as a means of communication. So the technicalities were there, but it was not packaged into the radio. So it was only when Marconi made use of the process of electromagnetic radiation to transmit the necessary messages was your radio formed. Now, the radio was at first known as the wireless. There's also one important clause you need to see here is the radio is often used by the defense and military sources in order to transmit uh, information. So they do use coded information and for all of these you need to use the various wavelengths. So now the radio was at first which was known as the wireless became an important means worldwide because of the fact that it was used for reporting. Now the reporting was done at all levels but the radio gained a prominence for reporting when the Titanic shank. Now the Titanic was a luxury ship as we all are aware and the Titanic uh, crashed into an iceberg and it sank. So uh, the radio was primal in the broadcasting of the news of the sinking of the Titanic. And you can imagine people who needed the information were all glued to their radio sets for further information. So then on radio started gaining its impetus. Now the first scheduled non-experimental public program broadcast on radio was an evening program of the results from the presidential election between Warren G. Harding and James M. Cox. So the radio was there, the radio was helping with the defense forces, the radio was gradually becoming modes of mass media. First it was becoming a mode of mass media by providing instant news. The leisure aspect was there. Then the radio looked after the music. Then of course you had the scheduled programs which began to take place in the radio. So the radio's first scheduled non-experimental public program broadcast on the radio was on an evening of the results. Now you could see that the growing popularity of radio was invested upon and there were the presidential elections which were held and the radio was used as a broadcaster for the results of the presidential elections. Now, as a result of this broadcast, executives of Westinghouse Electric Company were convinced that the radio was commercially and scientifically feasible and within 18 months, radio was a national fact. So, the popularity of the radio grew to such an extent that now the politicians began to use radio as a means of endorsement of their political results. Now, this popularity was conceived by the technicians and the executives of the Westinghouse Electric Company and soon they began to invest upon it and they made sure that the radio was commercially and scientifically feasible within 18 months and as a result of which soon the radio became a national fact. The first radios were crystal sets built by individuals all over the country and by 1921 stores were selling factory made radios. So this is how your transistors came into being. 
So as the popularity of the radio grew, as people started using the radio to not only listen to news because of the fast dissemination of news that was taking place via the radio, people started becoming more and more involved with the process. Now, this growing engrossment was observed by the technicians of Westinghouse Electric Company and the technicians and executors started making the transistors. So the first transistors which were available in the market were crystal sets and they were sold all along the stores around 1921 and finally the factory made radio sets were made available to the people. Now the financial potential in opening a radio station caused many businesses, institutions and wealthy individuals to acquire federal licenses and establish their own broadcasting facilities. So, it was also the time period when censorship was growing. So, you have to take your requisite permissions, you have to obtain your licenses. So it was at this point of time the financial potential of having a radio station was gradually being understood by the people and as a result of which there was an uprising in many business houses, institutions and the wealthy individuals to acquire federal licenses and these licenses were sought by them so that they could open their own broadcasting facilities. Now, the radio developed simultaneously as an entertainment medium and as a means for conveying the news and public events to the society. Now, we know that there is a transmission time. So, uh, if we take the example of Akashwani or Vivid Bharti, we see that uh, morning 10 o'clock probably is devoted to the morning section of the news, followed by the Western music and followed by the regional languages and so on. So, uh, simultaneously, along with the dissemination of the news, now radio was being used as a mode of entertainment. Entertainment in terms of uh, playing the music enabled them to revive the various genres of the music industry. So it was an indirect boost to the existing uh, music industry because people were now getting hooked to it. Now along with entertainment, it was also a means to convey the news and public events to the people. Now, if the development of drama broadened creativity within radio, the heavy usage of radio by politicians made broadcasting an influential medium within the society. So, along with the news, what was crucial here was the radio was now going into a full blast extension of creativity. So, the figment of imagination was catered to and you come across various dramas which were also included in the radio format. Now, uh, we are aware that the writing styles of the radio is far different from the writing styles of a television or any other normal theatrical place. So now what was happening here was we were getting into the concept of not only using the radio as a means of just playing songs, but it was also used by the politicians to make a huge political propaganda. Then it was also used to 
um, built in many creative channels where um, the drama was also catered to. So you did have your radio jockeys who would enact the drama. Now this requires a heightened sense of creativity because firstly, you are not giving visuals to the person and a thing like drama needs a total voice modulation. A thing like drama needs to be engrossing to the listeners because here you are presenting something which has been viewed or which people would tend to view. So with it, there was a heightened need of creativity. Now because of its ability to reach millions of voters simultaneously, the political office holders and candidates quickly adopted the radio. So you could see the large amount of political transformation, political agendas which were being propagated by the radio. So now you had your fair share of politicians who were using radio as a mode of dissemination of political news. Then you had heavy usage of uh, creative people who uh, dealt with drama and so on and forth. Now in India, the radio with its penetration to the rural areas is becoming a powerful medium for the advertisers. So if you take the entire demography of India, still there are secluded parts in the country, secluded pockets, where there is not too much of electricity even now, believe me, even if it's 2018. Now, in those pockets, the radio transmitters are very popular because not only they provide entertainment, but they also uh, cater to the leisure needs. So the radio programs in those areas are devised in a manner that would keep the listeners in growth. So for example, today if you see Akashwani's Vivid Bharti, Vivid Bharti has different slots allotted for the listening or uh, the uh, Vivid Bharti has different slots for different kinds of people. So if you see the time slot, say the time slot from uh, 2 p.m. till 4 p.m. is a time when the women are usually free. So you have programs like Sachi Saheli. Then uh, 5 o'clock you have the uh, programs where children are taught about different mathematical concepts or they have interviews, enriching interviews, talks, and so on. Then again, 8 o'clock is the time when dramas are retold. So what is happening here? You have programs like Hawa Mahal. Now Hawa Mahal is the dramatical concept, dramatical show of Vivid Bharti where plays are translated and they are read out in an engrossing manner. Now, the, because the radio listening is so widespread, it has prospered as an advertising medium for reaching the local audiences. Now, the TV is difficult by far to be plugged in all the time. Now, even if I'm going for work, I cannot carry my TV all the time because of the wastage of internet and what if internet is not there and the TV regular set is not portable enough. So we are constantly listening to radio. We are being constantly upgraded by the radio. So this is why the advertisers find the radio lucrative to disseminate the knowledge about their products, to advertise about their products. Now, if there is a product which has to be advertised, the charges of the radio are any day lesser than the TV advertisements. So, 
uh, people generally tend to go and look after the radio program. So uh, it's not only a quick and effective manner of advertising your product, but it's also cost effective. Moreover, the radio serves small, highly targeted audiences, which makes it an excellent advertising medium for many kinds of specialized products and services. So small, highly targeted audiences like we've discussed, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. or 3 to 4 p.m. would be Sakhi Saheli, where the homemakers would be relatively free. So it would be their me time, and in that time, they would discuss about the various programs. So it would be the time when uh, these programs would deal with women's issues, women's rights, recipes, songs which women would love to listen to and so on and then you have uh, programs like sports programs you have various uh, famous celebrities coming and giving their interviews and so on so for selected audience radio has customized programs which are transmitted so the radio serves small highly targeted audiences which makes it an excellent advertising medium for many kinds of specialized products and services. Now, as far as audience is concerned, radio does not hamper person's mobility. So, a person does not need to dislocate himself to listen to the radio. Nowadays, it's more easier with the development of smartphones, even the normal phones. All you need to do is use the headset as an antenna and yes, the radio is on your hand. So, the audience does not need to travel with the radio and hence it's a boon. Then, as a vehicle of information for masses, it's still the fastest. For instance, it would take less time for a news reporter for radio to arrive on the spot with a microphone and recorder than the same for the TV along with the shooting team and equipment. The television has its advantages. The television shows you things as it is, which is why television is considered to be more authentic given the demerit that in radio you are not able to exactly view the situation and that could be a disadvantage because you do not know whether the situation which is being disseminated to you holds authenticity or not. But as a vehicle of information, it is still the fastest. So today, if there's an accident which has occurred, it is more easier for the news reporter to directly come to the site, record it, take the bite, and send the bite to the central office. But that's not the case in the case of a television. In cases of a television, the reporter has to shoot, the reporter has to um, bring his OTP when the reporter has to transmit it and it takes time. Then another important feature of radio as mass medium is that it caters to a large rural population which has no access to TV and where there is no power supply. Now, Apart from catering to rural places where there is no uh, power supply, where there is uh, no oh, provision where people can actually use the television, the radio is a boon. The radio is also, as you can see, uh, there are slots like Fauji Bhayoka shows and all, which are timed in such a way that it's the time when the soldiers return to the barracks for rest. So that's the time they provide some important entertainment and then it is followed by the news. So strategic programs are strategically broadcasted in the radio. The radio as a mass medium therefore caters not only to audiences in elite areas but it also 
caters to audience in the rural areas where there is no access to TV and there is no power supply. So, in such places, the All India Radio programs continue to be the only source of information and entertainment. Moreover, All India Radio broadcasts programs in 24 languages and 140 dialects. So, in places, specifically in places like Northeast, uh, there are still areas where it's absolutely not possible to have your normal DTH connection or cable connection. So the radio is always a boon for such places and the All India Radio or Akashwani has taken the owners to spread the usage of radio as much as possible in India. So uh, currently it is broadcasting programs in 24 languages and 140 dialects. Now, the economics of the radio does not allow tailoring program content to the needs of a small and diverse audience. So, the very example of uh, having a radio program at around 6.30 in the evening for the 4G bios and following up with the main news from Vivid Bharti at 7 or having a show like Sati Saheli from say 2 to 4 p.m. where the homemaker's needs are catered to as well as the girl child's needs primarily and so on and forth also economize the usage of radio to the highest and because of this programs, the tailored programs, the popularity of the radio is forever etched. Now thus it is economically viable to recast a program for broadcast to audiences in different sub-regional cultural and linguistic contexts. So given the fact that 24 languages and 140 dialects are implemented by the All India Radio, it simply implies that due to the economic viability, the program is recast and it's broadcasted to audiences in different sub-regional cultural and linguistic contexts. Now, this enhances the value of radio as a program in networking developmental programs. So, in network developmental programs, the usage of the radio as a medium of mass communication is thereby heightened. Thus, it offers many possibilities in networking from locally or regionally coordinated broadcasts and interactive exchange of queries and data. So you have personal problems which are written to and which are addressed. You have phone in programs uh, hosted by the radio where people call, share their grievances and the right advices are given so that they can be catered to. Now, it can serve as a standalone medium of information dissemination or a support medium for curriculum learning and hence it's a preferred mode of mass communication. So the NCERT also has various programs which are simultaneously broadcasted. So if you learn your physics concepts, your mathematical concepts, if you have any issues with certain subjects, they do send in specialists via your radio programs, where your criteria are all answered to. Now this is the brief history of radio. So in 1890, we have the birth of the radio, followed by 1892, where Scientist Nikola Tesla experimented with radio energy for communication. It still continues now to a great extent. Then in 1895, Marconi built a wireless system to transmit messages 
to a longer distance. Then by 1901, we have Marconi again conducting the different uh, transatlantic radio communications. By 1906, Reginald Fitzgerald made the first radio broadcast with audio. In 1899, the U.S. Army established a wireless communication system. By 1901, a radio telegraph service was set up in the Hawaiian Islands. By 1920, the first radio station, KBKA in Pennsylvania, was created with 1927, the Radio Act being finally functional and the operations were made to the best of the public interest. By 1933, FDR used radio to broadcast fireside chat to America during World War II. By 1933, Edwin Armstrong created the FM radio. The Galvin Corporation also introduced the first commercial radio by 1930. By 1938, we have CBS broadcast of Orson Welles' War of the World leading to the hysteria nationwide. By 1954, the Regency created the pocket transistor radio, the small portable radio by which you could carry it conveniently in your shirt pockets or your pants or your handbag or your purses and you could usually switch it on and listen. 1963 saw the first radio communication satellite Telsa which was lost into space and in 1990s, the birth of internet radio came. By 2002, Tunnelen begins bringing radio to the world. Now, let's go to the Indian broadcasting scenario. The radio broadcasting in India began as a private venture in 1923 and 1924 when three radio clubs were established in Bombay, Calcutta and Madras. So, the radio is relatively very new in India because the radio started only in the 1920s. So, in 1923 and 24, even then it was a private venture and the radio clubs were established in Mumbai, Calcutta and Madras. The radio club broadcasted the first radio program in India in June 1923. The daily broadcast of two to three hours consisted mainly music and talks. These stations had to close down in 1927 for lack of sufficient financial support. So you can see that the radio, which was a private venture starting out in 1923 and 24 between the cities of Calcutta, Bombay and Madras, broadcasted the first radio program. However, the two to three hours which consisted of only music and talks were closed down by 1927 due to a lack of sufficient funds. Now, this was followed by the setting up of a broadcasting service that began in July 1927 on an experimental basis at Bombay and a month later at Calcutta under an agreement between the government of India and a private company called the IBC or Indian Broadcasting Company Limited. So, um, post the closing of the private radio stations, it was decided that the government would set up the broadcasting service. So it was followed by the setting up of a broadcasting service that began broadcasting in India in July 1927 on an experimental basis at Bombay and a month later at Calcutta under the agreement between the government of India and the private company Indian Broadcasting 
uh, Company Limited. Now, faced with a widespread public outcry against the closure of the IDC, the government acquired its assets and continued the broadcasting service on the Department of Labor and Industry. And since then, broadcasting in India has remained under the government's control. So, the running of the radio was an expensive affair and the people, the private ventures were not able to run it without government aid. And even if the government aid was provided, yes, it was not sufficient for them to run. So, faced with a widespread public outcry against the closure of the IBC or the Indian Broadcasting Company, the government acquired its assets and constituted the Indian Broadcasting Service under the Department of Labor and Industries. So, since then, broadcasting in India has remained under government control. Now, In 1936, a radio station was commissioned in Delhi. In the same year, the All India Radio and a new signature tune was added. So by 1936, the radio station was commissioned in Delhi. Now in the same year, the Indian Broadcasting Service was renamed as All India Radio and a new tune was added. The Delhi station became the nucleus of broadcasting at the national level. Now, All India Radio has come a long way since 1936. Now, when India became independent, the All India Radio Network had only six stations at Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Madras, Lucknow, and Tiruchirappalli, with 18 transmitters, six on the medium wave and the remaining on the short wave. The radio listening on the medium wave was confined to the elite of the cities. So, in 1936, the commission was finally set up in Delhi. Now, in the same year, the All India Radio started its full-fledged demonstration and with an anthem was set and a signature tune for Akashwani or All India Radio was set. Delhi became the nucleus or the primal zone from where all the um, broadcasting and all the nitty gritties of transmission would be looked after. Then, uh, with that, uh, in 1936, All India Radio was now a full fledged uh, body and it had, when it started, it started with only six stations. So, Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, Lucknow, and Tiruchirappalli, and with 18 transmitters, six on the medium wave and the remaining on the short wave. Now, radio listening on medium wave was confined to the urban elite of the cities, probably because of the transmission timings as well as the frequency which the transmitters could catch up with. Now, let's come to the war years. The radio broadcasting assumed considerable importance with the outbreak of the Second World War. So, by 1939, the entire country was covered by a shortwave service and the program structure underwent a change to meet wartime contingency. So, with the imposition of the war, the entire country now began to be covered with shortwave service instead of your medium wave services. And the program structure also underwent a massive change due to the wartime contingencies. So, now there was lesser airing of shows which would be entertainment wide but it was now more of 
shows which would keep you updated with the ongoings of the war. Now, during this period, the news and political commentaries were introduced and special broadcasts were made for the people on the strategic northeastern and northwestern borders. So, the radios need to be transmitting proper messages was growing larger than expected and by now, it so happened that the political news and commentaries were being introduced and special broadcasts were being made for the people on strategic northeastern and the northwestern borders. So more and more people who were now getting interested into the wartime details and all of them featured with the special broadcast programs which were made specifically people in the northeastern and the northwestern borders were kept abreast with this altered changes now you have the underground and congress radio so the congress radio was a clandestine and underground radio station which was operated for about three months during the quit india movement of 1942 uh, movement launched by Gandhi against the British for India's uh, independence. So we could see that in 1942, the fervor, the nationalistic fervor was at a peak and Quit India movement gained an impetus because uh, it was launched by Mahatma Gandhi who was by then almost considered to be the father figure of the nation. And um, this underground radio uh, operated during the Quit India movement for a period of about three months. So uh, this was the movement launched against the Britishers. It's also known as Leave India Movement, the Quit India Movement, and there are taglines like Go Britishers, Go, and so on. So, the Congress Radio was the broadcasting mouthpiece of the INC and functioned from different locations from Bombay, currently known as Mumbai. So, uh, the updates, the killings, the updates, the nationalistic plans, etc. were all being now broadcasted. And this broadcast was not possible in mainstream radios because they all came under the British Raj. Now, the primal aim of this radio stations were to uh, build, uh, build programs which went against the Britishers and which kept the people updated about the various uh, techniques which were used for the different um, uh, activities against the Britishers. So here you have in different locations, uh, it was said to be uh, the source of the broadcast, but however, it was broadcast only in the city of Mumbai. Now, this was organized by Usha Mehta, a veteran freedom fighter of India with the help of ham radio operators. Now, everyone can order a ham radio. Now, ham radio is the private radio. It's your personal radio. It will have your frequency, which you set to uh, have. So, even now, there are many ham radio operators. Now, ham radio starts off with the notion that it will not be aired into the mainstream wavelengths but they will use frequencies which will be private now ham radio were, was helpful in the launching of the congress radio her associates included vithal bhai javeri chandrakan javeri and babu bhai thakkar the technicians and equipment were supplied by Nanak Motawani of Chicago Radio, Mumbai. So, uh, 
this ham radio was an underground venture now this ham radio was uh, uh primarily broadcasted by usha mehta but she had the uh, help of prominent persons like vitul bhai zaveri chandrakan zaveri and babu bhai thakkar now the technicians and the equipments were supplied by nanak motwani of chicago radio mumbai now eminent personalities like ram manohar lohia achyut rao patwardhan and purushottam trikam das were also associated with the congress radio so ram manohar lohia then uh, patwardhan trikam das all of them supported and played a detrimental role in the congress radio now on 14 august 1942 within a week of launching of the quit india movement the secret congress radio went on air now that point of time was a hotbed of nationalism hotbed of politics news needed to be disseminated it was not possible through print medium or it was not possible all via gathering into libraries because there was a major crackdown on libraries and the british did not support the anti british power so the ham radio became an instant hit because of the way the messages were disseminated so it basically did the work of keeping people abreast with the functioning of the nationalist movement so dr usha mehta herself broadcasted the announcement this is congress radio calling on a wavelength of 42.34 meters from somewhere in india now dr usha mehta when she broadcasted the announcement that this is congress radio calling on a wavelength of 42.34 meters calling from somewhere in india she actually meant mumbai and pockets of mumbai but she didn't want to give in the location the broadcast was continued till november 11 after which it was shut down as the members were arrested so the britishers cracked down on the ham radio service and all the members were arrested leading to the discontinuation of the underground congress radio now bearing one person who was awarded 5 years of imprisonment the rest of the people were awarded a year each of imprisonment now let's see the all india radio during and post independence period the all india radio which has six radio stations during independence branched out to 82 post independence so the all india radio has just six stations now it has almost 82 radio stations and it's almost ever growing so it was divided into five zones the five zones consisted of in the northern zone or the north zone you have places like ajmer allahabad aligarh bikaner delhi gorakhpur jaipur jodhpur jalandhar lucknow mathura rampur shimla udaipur and varanasi so the entire northern belt had these stations in allahabad aligarh bikaner delhi gorakhpur jaipur jodhpur jalandhar lucknow mathura rampur shimla udaipur and varanasi in the eastern zone we had the radio stations post independence in agartala aizwal bhagalpur calcutta katak dibrugarh guwahati imphal joypur kohima kursiyong ranchi pasi ghat it's near arunachal patna sambalpur from orissa shillong silchar siliguri tawang and tezu tezu is again near arunachal now in the east zone 
almost all the seven sisters have the radio station so places like uh debrugar uh, which is again a city right so even debrugar has its own akakpani debrugar kendra or guwahati has akakpani guwahati kendra so all of these were there then in the west zone we have amdavad bhopal bhuj bombay gwalior indore jabalpur nagpur panachi parbani pune raipur rajkot and sangli so somewhere in the near maharashtra and gujarat you have the all india radio stations in south there was lp bengaluru bhadravati calicut coimbatore kudappa dharwar gulbarga hyderabad madras mysore pondicherry port blair tiruchirappalli tiruvelli trichur trivandrum vijayawada and visakhapatnam so these were the uh, all india radio zones for the south zone then in kashmir zone you had jammu leh and srinagar now in the year of 1957 the all india radio was renamed as akashvani which was controlled by the ministry of information and broadcasting so after independence the indian radio was regarded as a vital medium for networking and communication mainly because of the lack of any other medium so all the major national affairs and social events were transmitted through the radio so akashwani was called only during the year of 1957 and it was controlled by the ministry of information and broadcasting government of india now after independence the indian radio was regarded as a vital medium for networking and communication mainly because of the lack of other mediums the factor for such is that electricity or power supply was not there and is still not there in many villages moreover many people could not afford a tv handset and then uh in the absence of electricity in the absence of television in the absence of the portability of the television the radio became the primal choice for the users so all the major national affairs and social events were transmitted through the radio the indian radio played a significant role in social integration of the entire nation so the news is relating to national affairs social affairs were transmitted through the radio the indian radio therefore played a significant role in social integration of the entire nation the all india radio mainly focus on development of a national consciousness as well as of a national integration so the all india radio was now becoming the pillar through which apart from the national propaganda the radio was serving as a watchdog for the government the radio was quickly transmitting information which was required and so on so people were becoming more familiar people were being more abreast with the day to day functionings now as a result of which the radio gained its status as a highly preferable mass medium now the all india radio focus on development of national consciousness so you have all the 
a requisite uh, channeling of programs based on needs. Now, one of the primary needs that was met with by the All India Radio was that of the needs of youth. So there were many Yuva Vikas programs which were being held as a result of which the seeds of national integrity, national consciousness was instilled amongst the citizens. Programming was organized and created, keeping in mind the solitary purpose of national and political integration. So this was it, the political and national unity, the sense of patriotism, etc. were kept in mind while scheduling the programs and their content. This supported in prevailing over the imperative crisis of political instability which was created after independence. The political enhancement and progressive nation building efforts were aided by the transmission of planned broadcasts. So the support which was given enabled people to uh, create and give um, imperative on the political instability which was created immediately after independence and this political enhancement and progressive nation building efforts aided in the transmission of planned broadcasts. Now, the <coughs> All India Radio also provided assistance in enhancing the economic conditions of the country. So why are the All India Radio the necessary information about the financial schemes which were released by the government of India were provided and more and more people were becoming aware of the different modes of such. And the Indian radio was particularly designed and programmed to provide support to the procedure of social improvement which was a vital prerequisite of economic enhancement. So does Beti Barhao, Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao, all those movements then uh, you have different um, uh, programs which dealt with the problems and hindrances of the developing country and this became the primal uh, medium through which measures and procedures of social improvement were taken at hand. Now the function of broadcasting paved a way for the search of modern concepts. Now later with the modernization of the country, television was introduced and broadcasting achieved new status. So when the television came, people went all crazy because in radio they were simply getting used now to just listening the programs but here comes the television where you are now seeing it so it's just like if Ramayana was dramatically told over the radio the Ramayana in television would be more better because it became flesh and blood in one time but by then the radio had become a veteran medium in India. Diverse programs including entertainment and melodious songs we had programmed like Sada Bahar Nagme, Chaya Ghi and so on which were being transmitted worldwide and nationwide. Now, the Akashwani or the All India Radio still stands as one of the biggest radio networks around the globe. Now, till the end of 1976, the radio licenses had reached a colossal figure of nearly 1.74 crores, which fetched revenue of rupees 23.51 crores. Today, 
the radio network has spread to remote corners of the country. It is now possible to bring a sense of unity, not only political, but also cultural amongst the diverse traditions that enrich our land. So the All India Radio or the Akashwani still holds the largest and biggest position worldwide. So till the end of 1976, radio licenses have reached a colossal figure of 1.74 crores, which fetch revenue of rupees 23.51. So today the radio network has spread to the remote corners of India. Now it's possible to bring in a sense of unity, not only political, but also cultural amongst the diverse traditions that enrich our land. Now, let's go to the milestones of All India Radio. The phenomenal growth achieved by All India Radio through the decade has made it one of the largest uh, media organizations in the world. Now, today, All India Radio reaches out to 99.18% of the population spread over about 91.85% of the area through 262 broadcasting centers. The inception can be traced back to the enforcement of the Telegraph Act on October 1st, 1885. So, the beginnings of radio from June 1923 has been phenomenal. So, if it is reaching up to 99.18%, imagine the popularity of the radio and the variety broadcasting centers which has been set up for that purpose. So, in June 1923, the broadcast of programs by the Radio Club of Bombay has happened. In 1923 November, the Calcutta Radio Club puts out programs. So, the Radio Club of Bombay, the private venture, starts in 1923. And in November 1923, it is shut down due to paucity of funds. Now, uh, in July 31st, 1924, the Broadcasting Service is initiated by the Madras Presidency Radio Club. By July 23rd, 1927, the India Broadcast Company, IBC, Bombay Station is inaugurated by Lord Irwin, who was then the Viceroy of India. And by August 26, 1927, the Calcutta Station of IBC is inaugurated. So you can see that the seeds are sown from early 1920s. So 23, if radio club is set, then we find the shutting of the radio club. Then we find the initiation of the broadcast services by Madras Presidency Radio Club. Then uh, the IBC is set up. Now the Bombay station is inaugurated by Lord Irwin, who was the then Viceroy of India. Then the Calcutta station of IBC is also inaugurated. Now we come to the 1930s era. Now in the 1930s, on March 1st, 1930, IBC went into liquidation. It was a disaster. Now with that, in April 1931st of April, the Indian station broadcasting uh, service, the Indian state broadcasting service under Department of Industries and Labor commenced on an experimental basis. By March 1935, the post of 
controller of the broadcast or the person who would look after the programs was instituted. In August 38, 1935, Lionel Silden appointed the first controller of broadcasting in India. By September 10, 1935, Akash Mysore, a private radio station, was set up. In January 19, 1936, the first news bulletin broadcast from All India Radio was set. In June 8, 1936, the Indian State Broadcasting Service became All India Radio. Now, by August 1, 1937, the Central News Organization came into existence. By November 1937, the All India Radio came under the Department of Communication and in 1st of October, the external services started with the push to broadcast. So when you see the time frame, now with the liquidation, you could see the setting up and the taking over of the broadcasting scenario by the government under Labour and Industries Limited. Then became the process of evolution. Now what was happening here? The controller of broadcast, the post for the controller of broadcast was set and Lionel Silden was the first controller of broadcasting in India. Now Akashwani Mysore, a private radio station, was set up in September 10, 1935. And when Akashwani was set up, the first news bulletin broadcast from All India Radio happened on the 19th of January. By June 8, Indian State Broadcasting finally became the Akashwani, or Akashwani was by 1957, Indian State Broadcasting Service. Now, the Central News Organization came to existence because of the continuous need for the dissemination of news. By November 1937, All India Radio was under the Department of Communication and October 1st, the external services were started with push to broadcast. Then we come to the 1940s scenario. Now, in 1940s, by October 24th, 1941, All India Radio came under the Department of Information and Broadcasting. Now, January 1st, 1942, saw Akashwani Mysore being taken over by the Wodiyar dynasty or the Maharaja of Mysore. February 23rd, 1946 saw All India Radio come under the Department of Information and Arts. By September 10, 1946, the Department of Information and Arts changed to Department of Information and Broadcasting. 1947, at the time of partition, there were six radio stations. The radio stations were at Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, Tiruchirappalli, and Lucknow. And then there were three other radio stations in Pakistan, which were Peshawar, Lahore, and Dhaka. By September 1948, the Central News Organization was split up into two divisions, the News Service Division and the External Service Division. So All India Radio came under information and broadcasting, followed by Akashwani Mysore being taken up by the Vodiyar dynasty, and then the setting up of the primal radio stations in Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Madras, Tiruchirappalli, Lucknow, and allied radio stations in Pakistan with Peshawar, Lahore, and Dhaka 
and then also now the central news organization was finally being split into two divisions news service division and of course the external news service division to cater to the pakistan setup in peshawar lahore and dhaka then 1950s we have in july 28th 1952 the first national program of music was broadcast from all india radio till then the radio was mainly called wireless and then only political information news were being uh, broadcasted it was only in july 28th 1952 that the first national program of music was broadcast from all india radio so in 29th of july 1953 the national program of talk english commenced from air or all india radio so uh, the national program of talk they would get eminent personalities who would give important talks on the radio so by then uh, the uh june 29 1953 that was taken care of in 1952 the first radio sangeet sammelan was held by august 15 1956 the national program of play commenced radio sangeet sammelan was a a first to bring together people Uh, from the music industry to bring together uh, people who had great interest in the music scenario so by august 1956 the national program of play commenced now play implied that they have already by now understood the growing need to set up a uh, the dramatic society so uh, from various literatures the uh, play would be translated and they would be simultaneously aired in the regional languages by october 3rd 1957 the vivid bharti services started by november 1st 1959 the first station in delhi started as a part of all india radio then you have the period of 1960s now in 1960s the commercials or advertisements of vivid bharti was being introduced now yuvavani services started on july 21st 1969 by august 15 1969 1000 kilowatt super power medium wave transmitter commissioned at calcutta mokra by 1970 uh, uh in the 1970s by january 8 1971 one 1000 kilowatt super power medium wave transmitter was commissioned at rajkot by 1974 the akashwani annual awards were instituted by april 1st 1976 doordarshan separated from all india radio by 1977 the introduction of political party broadcast had taken place in july 23 1977 the first ever fm service was inaugurated from madras so in 1960s uh vivid bharti took the central stage so you had commercials which were introduced for vivid bharti then you had yuvavani which was for the youth it was a special program which dealt with education sports and career counseling then psychological guidance and so on and also the youth were introduced to the various nationalistic schemes through nss programs ncc programs red cross guidance scout movements and so on so uh then on akashwani in 1974 started off with the akashwani annual awards 
and by 1st of April 1976 now Doordarshan also separated itself from the All India Radio then many political broadcasts were introduced during the period of 1977 now the political broadcast was introduced because that was the period when emergency was slowly going to be declared and it was also time period for the Bangladesh strikes and so on. Then by July 23rd, 1977, the first ever FM service was inaugurated in Madras. Now let's see the 1980s scenario. In May 1983, all India Radio Baroda became a CBS Central Broadcasting Station. By September 14, 1984, two high-powered 250 kW shockwave transmitters were inaugurated at Aligarh. By October 30, 1984, the first local station at Nagar Coil started. January 26, 1985, saw commercials being introduced into primary channels. August 15, 1985, Ali News Bulletin started. In 1985 August, All India Radio stations were provided with five channel satellite receiver terminals. By May 18, 1988, the first national channel was introduced along with uh, the commissioning of integrated naughty service on April 8, 1989. Then we come to the 1990s era. So, on 2nd of March, 1990, the 100th station of All India Radio commissioned at Warangal was set up. By March 10, 1990, two 500 kilowatt superpower shortwave transmitters were inaugurated at Bengaluru. So, first it was the setting up of the 100th station of uh, All India Radio in Warangal, followed by the setting up of 500 kilowatt superpower shortwave transmitters in Bengaluru. Then in 1990, all India Radio introduced Lhasa Call Award for Best Production on the theme of national integration. By 1990s, All India Radio introduced award for the Best News Correspondent of the Year. By October 2nd, 1991, Vivid Bharti Panaji became a CBS channel. By October 2nd, 1992, the commissioning of FN Channel and Jalandhar took place. Then on the 10th of January, uh, you started having the phone-in programs. Now once the FN Channel was set up in Jalandhar, the phone-in programs became very popular where the listeners could dial up their radio station, call and listen to the songs, whichever they wanted to do so. The January 10, 1993 saw inauguration of phone-in programs at All India Radio. Then in January 28, 1993, there was the commissioning of VB Channel at Varanasi. By April 1st, 1993, the 150th station of All India Radio was inaugurated at Barhampur, Urissa. Then by August 15, 1993, the introduction of selling of time slots on FM channel to private parties at Delhi and Mumbai started. So if a match was taking place, then the private parties could book that slot all together for their transmission and so on. Then in September 1st, 1993, the time slots on FM channel were sold to Delhi, from Delhi to now at Chennai. Now Sky Radio became operational followed by uh, the time slots on 
the private parties being sold to Calcutta on the 25th of July. Then the multi track recording studio commissioned at Mumbai was set up in 1994. Then in September 28, 1994, four 500 kilowatt superpower shortwave transmitters at Bangalore was inaugurated making Bangalore one of the biggest transmitting centers in the world. Then by November 13, 1994, the time slots on the FM channels went to private parties at Panaji. In 1995, January, the radio paging service started. Now with the paging services, by August 1995, the recording studios were finally set up in Chennai, where now it was easier to bring in celebrities and whole programs. And also it gave the radio jockeys the flexibility to record the program and transmit it later. By 1995, All India Radio introduced Akashwani Awards for Best Audience Research Survey Report. And by February 1st, 1996, the foundation stones was laid for the new broadcasting house in Delhi. In May 1996, the launching of All India Radio's online information service on the internet was set up. By January 13, 1997, the audio in real time on internet service started. By November 23, 1997, Prasar Bharti came into existence. Then in 1998, the 26th of January, uh, the radio's on-demand service on second FM channel was constituted with the All India Radio News on Television, Telephone, Live Internet on February 25th, 1998. By April 1998, the sale of time slots on FM was stopped. By August 29th, 1998, Prasad Bharti bill was passed, this is very important, by the Lok Sabha on 31st of July 1998, making it operational through an ordinance. By June 1999, Sri R.R. Shah, IAS naming officiated member executive. So private official channels was now introduced. By 15th of August 1999, Radio's expansion became more popular in the northeastern belts. So, radio station was commissioned at Kokrajhar in Borland Autonomous Council areas. By 1999, the second FM channels were commissioned at Delhi and Calcutta. And by November 1999, All India Radio launched a Malayalam service for the Gulf region. Now it consisted of a 10 minutes news bulletin at night 11.15 uh, p.m. followed by a 5 minute commentary on topical issues. Now between the time period of 2000 to 2007, All India Radio introduced a BB channel at All India Radio, Jabalpur, then in March 13, 2000, radio station was commissioned for Bhubri in Boroland Autonomous Council area. By March 24, 2000, introduction of VB channel at All India Radio Chammu. Now in 2000, June, uh, the community radio was commissioned at Nongstoing and William Nagar in Meghalaya, Saiha in Mizoram, Twensang and Mon in Nagaland. By June, July 17, 2000, the Regional Straff Training Institute was set up at Bhubaneswar. In August 2000, there was this introduction of VB channel at All India Radio Coimbatore.
On September 3rd, 2000, the introduction of VB channel at All India Radio, Jamshedpur, saw light, followed by in February 7, 2001, the radio station commissioned at Gopeshwar Shamuli in the newly created state of Uttarakhand. By September 1st, all India Radio Entertainment Channels, FM Second Band, at four metros Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, and Mumbai was launched. Now, November 2001 was declared, 12th November 2001 was declared as Public Service Broadcasting Day to commemorate Gandhiji's visit to All India Radio Museum of Delhi and the Museum of Radio and Rodarshan was also inaugurated. On February 27, 2002, All India Radio launched its first ever digital satellite service to cater to the subcontinent and the Southeast Asian countries. 2002 July saw the marking of 75 years of broadcasting by the All India Radio by 26 January 2004, Pasha Bharti channel of All India Radio was launched at Delhi. On 26 January, Classical Musical Channel was launched at Bengaluru, followed by the 19th of February, where Sri Brijeshwar Singh took off as the DG of or the Director General of All India Radio. Now, in the time period of 2004, you see the launching of National Artist Award Ceremony in Hyderabad, followed by the launch of the Kisan Money programs from 12 stations. Now, uh, May 25, 2004, saw the transmission at Kupwara and the radio coverage at that area was in the border of Jammu and Kashmir. Now, in September 6, 2004, uh, the broadcasting was held from Vijayawara, while December 16 saw the broadcasting by the then Prime Minister of India, Manmohan Singh. Now, 12 All India radio channels were being set up in different regional languages from various state capitals, and they were made available countrywide through the KU band on the TH platform of Prasar Bharti. The 15th of June saw the transmission at Port Blair, Himmat Nagar, Saira Palli, Mamla, Rajkar, Agarthala, and Infal. By the 9th of July, 1 kilowatt FM transmitter commissioned at Shimla. 15th August 2005 saw the commission of the All India Radio at Udaipur, Rota, Gulbarga, Aurangabad, and Madurai. By 23rd August 2005, new broadcasting house equipped with digital studio setup was set up for new service division, external service and home service inaugurated by the Honorable Minister of Information and Broadcasting and Culture. The 2nd of September 2005 saw 1 kilowatt FM transmission commissioned at Gorakhpur. The 23rd of December saw the commission at Diogar in Orissa. By 25th of December, a 5 kilowatt Transmitter commissioned at both Hyderabad in Andhra Pradesh and Kursiyam in West Bengal. Then, in 27 December 2005, 10 kilowatt FM transmitter commissioned at Shillong in Meghalaya and 1 kilowatt transmitter commissioned at Darjeeling in West Bengal was set. Then by 15th and 16th of February 2006, the first Commonwealth Broadcasting Association conference was held in New Delhi. Then 2006 saw the 
setting up of a one kilowatt FM transmitter at the Jaiwara, Andhra uh, Pradesh, followed by the uplinking of the TH channel from 12 to 28. Now, one kilowatt FM transistor was set up in Kanpur, while 200 kilowatt megawatts uh, transmitter commissioned at Kargil, Jammu and Kashmir, followed by the transmitters in Dras and in Tisru in Jammu and Kashmir. By 2nd October 2006, the transmitter was commissioned at Kota in Rajasthan. Now, between the time period of January 2007, to December 2007, newer stations with FM transmitters were commissioned at Tamil Nadu, Dharampur, and Mancherla in Andhra Pradesh and Aurangabad, Bihar. The FM transmitters commissioned at existing stations at Itanagar, Arunachal Pradesh. Now, Aizwal or Mizoram, Kohima in Nagaland, Boripara in Orissa, Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh and Puducherry were also uh, commissioned. The existing FM transmitters at Chennai, which were at 5 kilowatts FM, and turned to FM Gold and FM Rainbow, was replaced by 20 kilowatt FM transmitters. The existing 5 kilowatt FM transmitters of FM Gold service at Kolkata was replaced by 20 kilowatt of frequency measuring transmitter. The new station was commissioned at Solo in Orissa. Then the existing 100 kilowatt transmitters at Delhi and Raipur were replaced with the new state of art technology. Now, as part of the special package for boosting border coverage, new stations with 1 kilowatt megawatt transmitters at Nyoma and Diskit in Lake region was also commissioned. Now, let's see what happened between January 2008 to December 2008. Now, firstly, FM station at Leh, Jammu and Kashmir was commissioned. Then a 200 kilowatt MW transmitter was commissioned replacing the 100 watt MW transmitter at Najibabad. Now, as a part of Jammu and Kashmir special package for boosting coverage, a new station with 1 kilowatt megawatt transmitter was commissioned at Podum and Kargil. Now with this, all the 12 projects included special Jammu and Kashmir coverage. The digital captive art stations at Leh, Varnasi, Rokta and Aurangabad were commissioned. New uplink stations at Dehradun and Silchar were implemented. A new DT channel, Radio Kashmir, Srinagar was added in the direct DTH service and there are now 21 radio channels available through the Q-Band DTH platform of Prasar Bharati DD Plus benefiting the listeners all over the world. Now, between January 2009 to December 2009, the new stations with 5 kilowatt FM transmission was commissioned at uh, Oras in Sindhu Durga Nagri in Maharashtra. The computerization of All India Radio and officers in progress to facilitate exchange of information and improvement of efficiency. Then uh, the permanent studio facilities equipped with digital equipment and computerized hard disk work, stations for recording, dubbing, editing, and playback provided at Jaipur. 
by January 2010 to December 2010, an exclusive dedicated FM channel, RFM Delhi, with one kilowatt transmitter was installed at All India Radio Broadcasting House Delhi. Now, this particular channel was available on 100.1 MHz in the NCR region or the National Capital Region. Now, six transmitters were again released. They were at Churachanpur in Manipur, then Bharmao in Himachal Pradesh, Geelong in Himachal Pradesh, Uti in Tamil Nadu, and Tanjavur again in Tamil Nadu. Now, all India radios, uh, news on phone service was also made available in 14 places. So, Delhi, Mumbai, uh, Chennai, Patna, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, Jaipur, Bangalore, Thiruvananthapuram, Imphal, Lucknow, Raipur, Guwahati, and Shimla. During the time period from January 2011 to December 2011, there was this primal broadcast of the World Cup. The FM goal then started 24-hour service from 2nd October 2011. In 2012, we see that Bangladesh finally recognizes Akashwani for its contribution in Bangladesh Liberation War on 27 March 2012 at Dhaka. Sri L.D. Monloy, DG All India Radio, received the award at a special ceremony which was held in Dhaka. Now let's see the program composition of All India Radio. The All India Radio's program pattern combines three main elements. So, primarily, three main elements are there to see the transmission of the program of All India Radio. So, there is a national channel. Wait a second. So there is a national channel which provides programs of countrywide interest and significance. Then you have zonal service for each of the four metropolitan centers. Then you have regional service from individual stations catering to the needs and interests of people of specific areas. So primarily the three main elements, national, regional and external are the Primal focus of India Radio is given. So the zonal zones are five in all the four metropolitan areas, and the regional programs differ from station to station, which caters to the needs. Now, the primal ingredients of all india radio program output are music spoken word drama features news and current affairs commentaries and discussion vivid bharti and its commercial service farm and home broadcast programs for special audiences like youth women children industrial workers tribal population then programs for overseas listeners broadcast in the external service. So, uh, these are the primal program output of All India Radio. You have music all the time. You have spoken words or talk shows where, you know, celebrities are brought in and then you will play the talk shows. Then you have different dramas where plays from the different literatures worldwide are usually um, translated, rewritten into a radio script and transmitted. Then you have different features. 
Now, news and current affairs, commentaries, discussions, and Vivid Bharti with its commercial services, farm and home broadcast programs for women like youth has this um, uh, programs which ingrain or instill in them the national sense of consciousness and integration then you have women's program then the women's programs could be anything ranging from recipes to women's health to women's rights to so on and forth then children's needs then industrial workers needs their rights their wages the tribal population needs rights land settlements bills etc are looked after and you have overseas listeners broadcast in the external service. Now to enable All India Radio to reach all sections of the Indian people, its programs in the home services are broadcast in 20 principal languages. Now in addition to the broadcast which happens in 20 principal languages, there is the external service of All India Radio, which beam their production all over the world to listeners in 24 different languages. Now, let's see the primal services of All India Radio. So the first function of All India Radio is to provide news. The news service division of all India Radio through its central and regional news bulletin and its current affairs commentaries and discussion provide accurate, objective, speedy and comprehensive coverage of news to listeners at home and abroad. So where there are listeners, now the news service division of All India Radio through its central and regional news bulletins, the current affairs commentaries discussion will provide accurate, objective and speedy as well as a comprehensive and detailed coverage of the news worldwide. Then All India Radio broadcasts a total of 239 news bulletins a day with a duration of 32 hours and 17 minutes. Of these, 67 are central bulletin broadcasts from Delhi in 19 languages with a daily duration of 10 hours 3 minutes. 57 bulletins from Delhi broadcast in 24 languages for a duration of 7 hours 14 minutes and 15 regional bulletins from 34 regional centers including the Pradesh in Delhi which is broadcast in 22 languages, 34 tribal dialects with a total duration of 15 hours every day. Now the major source of news for All India Radio are its correspondents at home and abroad. Now the news agencies as well as the monitoring services. Now All India Radio in total has about 206 correspondents now with 111 of them part time. Now let's go to the external services of All India Radio. Now All India Radio made its first broadcast to listeners outside India only in October 1st, 1939. Now today, the external services of All India Radio is broadcast in 25 languages for about 50 hours daily round the clock, reaching the listeners in a widely scattered time zone all across the world. So you can imagine Imagine the popularity of All India Radio worldwide at home as well. Now, let's come to the primal star phase of All India Radio, your vivid party. So, in Northeast, usually, vivid party used to start at 12 noon. 
so by 12th noon you would have the signature akashwani tune which is played and then you get ye hai vivid bharti so that jingle itself is very catching for millions of people in the rural areas who need to get in touch with the other side of the world so a self contained popular service of entertainment known as vivid bharti was started in october 1957 to meet the growing demand for popular music and light features the commercial advertising was introduced on all india radio in november 1967 from the bombay nagpur channel of vivid bharti on an experimental basis then it was gradually moved to calcutta so vivid bharti initially started off in 1957 catering to the musical needs and life features of the audience moving on the commercial advertising was introduced on all india radio in november 1967 from the bombay nagpur channel of vivid bharti on an experimental basis now it was gradually extended to calcutta in 1968 delhi and madras tiruchirappalli 1969 chandigarh jalandhar bangalore dharwad raj uh, amdavad rajkot kanpur lucknow and allahabad in 1970 followed by hyderabad vijayawada in 1971 and bhopal indore katak jaipur patna ranchi and trivandrum in 1975 now advertisements are accepted in any language as tape recorded spot for a duration of 15 seconds or 13 seconds only so vivid bharti being a popular mode was set up in different uh state uh, states around the um country and then it started receiving advertisement not only it acted as a source of revenue but it was so popular that it was always the preferred mode of broadcasting the advertisement Now, Vivid Bharti, an alternative national services of All India Radio, now forms a part of the central sales unit of commercial broadcasting service. So it has now also started originating programs. The total duration of broadcast of Vivid Bharti service is now of twelve hours and forty-five. minutes on weekdays and 13 hours and 20 minutes on Sundays and holidays the network covers 29 full fledged centers and 7 partial centers vivid bharti is also radiated through two powerful shortwave transmitters from delhi mumbai and madras so you can see that there has been a steady rise in the cross revenue which has been earned from this commercial services now it went from rupees 2.96 crores in 1970 to 71 to rupees 6.25 crores in 1975 to 76 and rupees 6.50 crores approximately between 1976 to 1977 now since inception until march 1977 all india radio has earned a total gross revenue of about rupees 38.21 crores from its commercial services so you can imagine the kind of services that all india radio is now providing to re- uh, users worldwide Now let's see the national programs. So the national programs of All India Radio were started in July 
The weekly national program of music provides an excellent opportunity to listeners to hear well-known exponents of Hindustani and Carnatic music. So, the classical music tradition of India is revived and revered and treasured and cherished through this radio medium. So, in 1952, the weekly national program of music provided an opportunity to listeners to hear well-known exponents of Hindustani and Carnatic music. Now, it has helped in better understanding of the two systems prevalent in North and South. So, at suitable intervals, programs based on recording of old masters are also featured on this program. So, you have uh, recitals of the Ustad Zakir Hussain, then uh, Ustad Bismillah Khan, Shanai recitals, all the recitals of eminent musicians are being propagated through the national program services of the All India Radio. Now, the medium of drama is utilized for popularizing the economic program. So be it the seat quality programs, the need to have good seats for good cultivation to get the good price for the harvest, etc., are seen in this. Then a special series of short plays on various themes, including the economic program, the family planning, dowry, and anti-castism are regularly broadcast. So you can hear the tagline, Hum do hamare do, or uh, that's to promote to children in our family. Or you have anti-dowry uh, ads, like there was this ad in which the father sent uh, uh, the bridegroom uh, with a gulag card and said he was just um, um, adept enough to just get the bullock card as a dowry and he didn't give his daughter's hand to that family's marriage. So the most significant achievement of All India Radio in the field of radio drama is its national place. Now once a month, an outstanding play from one of the main Indian languages is selected and translated into other regional languages of the country and broadcasted worldwide. So say Girish Karnath Hayavardhana, Mahesh Dattani's place, all of these or any place which are of an outstanding importance, they are translated and in once a month they are broadcasted simultaneously all across the country. Then, the for industrial workers going in a week for hillsides in their own dialects with number for rural audiences and consists of place kits, agriculture and other matters twice a week and programs on family planning in the national languages and in important dialects as often as possible. So programs for the youth in Yuvawani are broadcasted from Calcutta, Delhi, Hyderabad, Jammu, Patna and Srinagar stations. Now this service a forum to the youth between the age group of 15 and 25 years who present their viewpoints by participating in the wide range of programs like talks, discussions, interviews, plays, features and music. So a youth news bulletin is also broadcast by the youth themselves. So, we can see the variety of programs which are being published and 
which are being broadcasted by the All India Radio at large. So with this, we come to the end of our presentation. But before that, we would like to go into the primal points which we have started in this um, lecture. So basically, in today's lecture, we have come to know why the radio evolved as a primal measure of mass medium followed by a comprehensive history of the early broadcasting years, the war years, then the underground radio services which were launched by Usha Mehta which continued till the primal period of the Quit India movement for almost three months. Then it was of course shut down but we could see the nationalistic fervor which was there throughout. Then uh, when uh, we saw how All India Radio took its expansion in all the five zones, be it in the north zone cities like Ajmer, Allahabad, Shimla, Gorakhpur, Jalandhar, east zone Guwahati, Imphal, Aizwal, Kohima, Nagaland, and so on to the west zone, the southern zone, and the Kashmir zone. So we also learned in this module about the status of radio during and post-independence period. So in the year 1957 when Akashwani was named, we saw how Akashwani initially played a massive role into the national integration process and thereby it enhanced not only the socio-economic conditions, but it also led to the stronger development of beliefs in the already developing nation. Then Akashwani soon climbed the ladder of being the biggest radio network across the globe. Then we also see the phenomenal growth which was established by Akashwani for decades and which was responsible for making the All India Radio one of the largest media organizations of the world. So today Akashwani Radio goes to 99.18% of the population which are spread over uh, about 91.85% of the area of broadcasting. So then we learned about the major landmarks starting from 1920s, how the public scenario was wiped out, it merged with the government to the setting of the fully controlled government stations. And then we explored how in 1940s, the Information and Broadcasting Ministry came into setup and the expansions followed by eras of 50s, 60s, where Vivid Bharti was set up and how in the 70s, uh, the political party broadcast was started with 1980s and 90s being the prime period for Akashwani's development in uh, the national process. Then uh, we also came across the program patterns of Akashwani, how it catered to the nationalist channel, how it catered to the regional needs, how it catered to the overall countrywide needs. And the principal uh, uh, programs which were used by Akashwani were about music, spoken words, dramas, features, news and current affairs, commentaries, discussions, vivid parties, commercial services, farm and home broadcast, special audiences, programs for youth, women, children, industrial workers, tribal populations, and so on. Then we saw how the chief branches of Akashwani aired out. So there was news where 
today out of 67 central bulletins broadcast from delhi in 19 languages the daily duration of 10 hours and 30 three minutes the 57 external bulletins from delhi is broadcast in 24 languages and so on so we see how a total of 206 correspondence helps in the process then we also saw the external services followed by the incredible services of vivid bharti and the national programs which were led by them and we saw how the national programs for women, for children, for armed forces, industrial workers, etc., help in the overall development in the country with also the programs on family planning, etc. So with this, we come to the end of this class and I hope that your conception is crystal clear for the same. Thank you.